Hi guys, welcome to Protopilot. My name is Darren and in this week's episode we're going to be looking into how you create looping animations. So to illustrate this I'm going to create a little looping animation to simulate some content loading. So let me just show you exactly what we're going to build. So I've got this screen here just with this next button at the bottom. I'm just going to tap this button and then we're going to get this little, these little dancing dots, this little loading animation. So that's effectively what we're going to build in this week's episode. So let's get to it. Okay then, so I've already got my document prepared. So let me just walk you through it. So I've got a button graphic here, just a regular group with a label and a background graphic inside of it. So nothing special there. Inside of my loader group, I've literally got these three oval dots, which are just colored white. So that's, that's essentially everything we need um, that's, that's currently built. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the, the loading animation. That's practically the only thing we're going to do, but we're going to use some things to connect it up as well. And like I said, you can use this um, process to create any kind of looping animation. And it's just a good example to take you through how you loop stuff inside of Protopy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down a tap trigger. And this is going to point to the button. Okay. And in this tap trigger, I'm going to actually add a send response. And we're going to send a message to the current scene. And that's going to be a message that's just called load. Okay. So this method is just a way of triggering the, the animation when we want it to run. Okay. So I'm going to add another trigger and this is going to be a receive trigger. So this is, this is going to receive this message that's being sent here. So again, receive from current scene and we'll see in the drop down box here, we can see the message we just created load. So we're just going to choose that. And that's just going to be our way of triggering this animation. Okay. So that's the, the basic setup. One thing else we need to do is we just need to add an opacity response to this receive trigger and this is going to point to the loader group and we're just going to set the opacity to 100 and we're going to make that duration zero and just to check and our initial state of this group is at opacity zero so we're just going to bring it up to opacity before we start doing our dancing dots okay so let's get into creating the dancing dots now, like a lot of loading animations, it's, it's just a bit of choreography, really. So I've played around to get the the timings right, and it is a bit of um, trial and error, unless you're very good at math. There is a pattern to it. depends on what sort of animation you're doing. I wanted to do something not so much complex, but a little bit more confusing, just to kind of show you how the thing's kind of stitched together. Okay, so we've got our three dots. We want them to move up and then move down. And we want to do it in a sequence. So they look like they're laddering up and laddering down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a move trigger. And this is going to be our move up trigger for the first dot. So we're just going to call this move up one. As in dot number one, oval number one there. And we're going to choose oval one from our list over here in the properties panel. So this is going to be our target and we're going to choose move by. Okay. And we're going to move it by um, just 10 pixels and we're going to move it up first. We want to do a minus 10. Okay. We're going to move it by minus 10 and we're going to set the duration to, we're going to leave the duration actually at 0 0.2. And we're going to leave the delay also at zero. And we want to use this repeat feature. So within repeat is how we get our looping animation. So we're going to check this. And as soon as we check the repeat checkbox, we get access to these, these other values. So we've got a count here. We've got an interval here. And we've also got another checkbox just below this called infinite repeat. So we're actually going to check that because we want this to to loop infinitely. If you did want to loop it a set number of times and you could uncheck that and you could just specify it the, and the count you want, the amount of times you want it to loop in the count there, but we're going to do it infinite. And I'm going to set the interval at 0 0.6. Okay. So that's our first 
first move done. We're going to add another move. This is going to be move down one. So this is going to be the downward animation. And it's still going to be of oval one. We're going to choose move by again. And we're going to move it down. So we're going to move it by 10 pixels because we're moving downwards. So zero starts up here. And then as you go down the screen, the the y-axis in increments. Okay, so down is a positive number and up is a minus number. Okay, um, we're going to set the we're going to leave the duration actually at zero point two. We're going to delay it by zero point two, and we're delaying it because we've already run our move up animation by zero point two. So we want to wait for that to happen before we come back down again. So that's what the delay is for. We'll check our repeat and. We're going to add into this also 0 0.6. And let's just make sure we check infinite repeat because we want it to animate infinitely. Okay, so we can come over and have a have a test of this and uh, just hit the next button here. And we can see <laughs> we've got a slight um tick here on our on our dots. We've got our first dot just going up and down. There you go. Okay, so that's a successful test. Okay, so that's our first dot done. We now want to move on to our second dot. So I'm going to do another move. And this time I'm going to choose oval two. And we're going to choose move by like we did before. And the sequence of this one is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. This is also going to be minus 10 because we're doing the move up. Actually, let's just make it really clear. Move up two. And what did I say? 0 0.2, 0 0.2 delay. And we're going to check repeat, make it infinite, and make this 0 0.6. Okay. And I think it's worth noting this is this really helped me actually. The on the right hand side you've got this timeline, and there's not much you can do with the timeline in Protopi, but you can certainly use it as a visual guide. Um, you can move things around as well. I mean, you can do this kind of thing. Um, but you can see that there's a pattern forming. So we've got these two middle ones that are effectively lining up. And you can see this little um, infinity symbol here because we've got it on an infinite loop. And you can see it's already projecting what where the next where the next animation is going to be. Okay, so let's come over to our our trigger panel again, and we're going to add another move trigger. Sorry, move response. And this one's going to be called move down to and we're going to come over to our properties panel and we're going to choose move by we're going to set the y to um, 10 because we're moving down and this time we're going to set the duration to 0 0.2 we're going to put the delay at 0 0.4 and let's check our repeat and our infinite repeat. And we're going to make this 0 0.6, 246. Okay, looking good. Okay, so let's um, have a quick test of that. Cool, so we've got our first two little dots bouncing up and down, looking good. Okay, so let's move on to our final dot. So we're going to add a, another move. We're going to choose our oval three. And as you've guessed, move by. And again, we're going to move it by minus 10. And this time our sequence is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6, and infinite. And this is going to be our move up one. Another move trigger. Choose move by, and we're going to move it by 10. And our final sequence is going to be a duration of 0 0.2, a delay of 0 0.6, and an interval of 0 0.6. 
and we're going to infinite repeat that as well. And let's call this move down two. Sorry, three. And that should be three. There we go. Okay, so let's give that a test. Okay, looking good. So there is our dancing dot looping animation. So I've kept all of these, actually you can see these are all on ease in, ease out. And there's a slight judder between them because obviously ease in and ease out works where you it starts slowly and picks up speed and then it peters out as it comes to a stop. So it's got this easing in and this easing out. If we just select all of these, moves and I'm just going to change the easing curve to linear and if you have a watch and see how the animation changes let's give it. now you can see it's a little bit smoother it's a little bit softer so feel free to play around with the the easing the different um, easing curves I found the linear one to be just the smoothest and nicest one you can also obviously change the the sequence of durations, you just need to make sure they all match. Um, otherwise you'll get some weird things happening. Okay, and it's, it's sometimes this can confuse people the the what the interval should be in relation to these other other values. So remember just remember that the interval is the amount of time between each each iteration of the animation. So if your animation is taking 0.2 of a second to go somewhere then the interval is going to be the time between the time where it when it executes again so that's the interval and it's in seconds as well the same as all of these are are in fractions of seconds okay so that about wraps up our look at a looping animation and we're probably going to do some um, tutorials around timers so we'll probably come back to our looping animation and actually attach it to a timer so we can actually control the amount of time that that animation loops for okay then so i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video then give it a like and if you want to be notified of when i post new videos and i do post them pretty much every week or so um, then please subscribe and you'll get notified when i when i drop videos onto the channel i just want to let you know about my patreon website so I do free videos here on YouTube, but I also do more advanced and more in-depth videos on my Patreon website. There is a, a small subscription to that, which just kind of helps me um, find time to produce these videos. But if you want more advanced and more in-depth tutorials, then head over to patreon.com slash protopilot and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff over there. Also, on those particular tutorials, I write them out as well. So you've got a video of the tutorial, but you've also got a written written step-by-step -step guide of the tutorial as well. And you also get the Pi files for all of the free tutorials on YouTube. You'll get the, the video there as well as the source files as well, like this one. You'll be able to pick this one up, this, both the starter video, sorry, the starter Pi file and the completed one. Okay, so I think that about wraps up this video um, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take it easy.